Hey guys, so we are going to review the Druid today. And uh, first off, shout outs to Solitude for letting me use his account as I don't have a high level Druid. Uh, so th thanks a lot there because it's just, it's a lot easier to see what the class can do when you have all the skills and you can see all the percentages and uh, things like that. So thank you. And for everyone um, who's this is your first like tutorial video that you're watching, uh, this is definitely a beginner guide. Uh, if you're looking for more advanced uh, topics for like uh, late game things, uh, I'll briefly cover it, but I would recommend joining the Discord if you have questions like that. Uh, there's a link in the description of the video, and uh, we're actually doing a giveaway for a $25 gift card. So if you uh, join the Discord, um, I wish everyone good luck. So let's go ahead and start with an overview of the Druid class. So the Druid is the... Um, one of two healers in the game. So you have Druid and Shaman. And I did a Shaman review, and I recommend if you are if you know you want to play a healer class, uh, but you're not sure which one, then watch both videos. Uh, but I'll try and cover the differences here. And there's a lot of false information going around. I, I Sometimes I see in the in the chat, people are saying like, oh, Druid is way better than Shaman, like uh, way more damage and things like that. Um, I don't really want to go into that because it's just irrelevant information but and not not true at all uh, but I do think that Dru the druid is a good class uh, you can have a couple different play styles whereas I think the shaman only has two like viable play styles I think the druid actually maybe has three or four uh, also if you want to turn into a bird then just play the druid like that that sounds silly but it's actually the biggest selling point for the class, in my opinion, is if you like transforming into the bird, the, the difference between the two healer classes aren't that large. Same with the tank classes. Where the real variation begins is in the DPS classes. I say that in every video, but that's because I'm sure most people only watch the one that they're interested in. Uh, so yeah, the druid. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the attributes. So... Uh, Personally, uh, I go with a full int, uh, zero stamina, which is risky, and then um, tech. So I go a three, zero, two. Uh, the reason for that is uh, int scales with your attack, or int scales your heals up. So the more int you have, the more attack you have, the more attack you have, the more heals you do. Uh, and in my case, where I'm the tank, I need a lot of heals. There are certain fights where having stamina is really good. And especially, I'm just going to name a couple. Um, if you're not very good at interrupts, the Thunder Dragon or any of the dragons that like do AoE damage. Um, there's the, the Lion with Wings that swipes. So stamina is going to be good there. And, and lastly, the one that really stands out to me is the Gorilla that throws the rocks at the back line. Especially if you have an assassin on your team, you may need to run some stamina. The reason for that is the gorilla specifically throws the rock at the back line, and he throws three rocks and or five rocks, and it's supposed to be random, but a lot of times it ends up just hitting the same person five times in a row. So whatever randomness, right? Um, when you have an assassin, that's one less person in the back line to split up the rocks. So uh, stamina, like I've seen my healer get one shot because they're glass cannon healing. Um, also, the tankier you are as a healer, the less you have to heal yourself, so your tank gets more heals. Um, so that's that's the argument for not my build. So I, I have played devil's advocate there a little bit, but I personally think just glass cannon, huge heals on my tank, who's always almost always single target uh, tanking. Uh, and that's that's how my team has to play because I'm really squishy as the main tank. Um, the druids get an assist and a guardian buff, whereas the shamans get the assist and the uh, symbiosis buff. Uh, this is hardly relevant, but just if you're going to use a pet, then I would, that's not the assist pet, which is what I'll recommend later. But then the guardian one's pretty good too. Uh... Oh, a big thing I need to bring up is crit. 
So, uh, heals can crit. That's really good. That's why tech is my secondary. Uh, so let's go ahead and move over to pets. I did kind of bring it up, uh, but you can see that Solitude right now has this pet equipped. Probably because Earth is really, like, the, um, really useful in the map that we're on. Because we're against uh, a lot of uh, Frost. Mostly Frost Earth. Um, but the main reason you also want to use this pet is for the high assist. So the, the assist talent is going to scale your attack stat higher. You remember how I said for DPS classes, I don't know if, you, if you've watched my other videos, but I said that an attack pet isn't even that bad for DPS. Uh, I prefer assist, but attack is better. For, for sh Shaman and Druid healers, the attack does not matter. You do not want an attack pet. You need all assist. In fact, assist guardian is going to be best for Druid and assist symbiosis is going to be best for Shaman. Mainly because you do want that secondary, um, you know, survivability. There's a little misconception I see going around that be, uh, we'll talk about it later with the skills, that because the druid does some attack skills is that they're like more offensive oriented. Um, that doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Uh, the only time you're going to use offensive skills will be in your AFK skills. <laughs> uh, eventually the bosses get so hard that you can't spare any time not healing the tank. Uh, oh, so yeah, let me let me <laughs> cover that again. Assist pet is the most important, and you can go to the manual, and you can scroll down, um, and you'll be able to see all the pets that are available currently, f well, that you've seen. Uh, there's also a guide. If you join the Discord, I'm I'll post um, I'll post uh, I'll post the uh, screen or a google sheet that has all the pets uh, someone called it the ulala dex shout outs to the guy who made that on let me get his name because i want to give him credit i think it, it did take a lot of work um he posted on the official discord his name is uh, kevo he plays on server three uh him and spicy pudding put together this sheet and i think i'll be using it although you kind of look at it once and then you're you're kind of done you already know what you need um but if you ever forget you can always go back and reference it but just based off the manual, you can see that um, the Velociraptor is really good. You don't unlock that until much later. So if you're a beginner watching this video, then these four Marmots have always been my recommendation. Because they come in different types and they're all assist. Uh, it's the same ones I recommended for my uh, Shaman. Oof. Okay, let's go to pet skills. So pet skill um, is really easy. You're going to want Inspire. Inspire increases your attack. It's the best DPS um, skill and also the best uh, healing skill. Um, if you can't get Inspire, then increasing your um, increasing your defense isn't bad. There's going to be times where it, Devotion will be better because you just need to stay alive. Uh, but let's go to the passives because you almost always want to go inspire uh, so for the passive skill you want to increase your attack um, if, photosynthesis is the best for every class I'm always going to recommend photosynthesis down here uh, increases the base energy by one point and restores one point of energy every eight seconds for your pet I did misspeak in one of my videos where I said it gives you energy uh, I think that uh, I'll correct it in the comments but the photosynthesis is for your pet. So this just means more Inspire casts on yourself. You're going to get more attack um, throughout the battle, giving you more heals. And that's why photosynthesis is by far the best one. Worst case scenario, you, you don't end up getting that. Then I've been recommending Competitive Heart. This is just to give you more attack. All right. So we finished pet skills. Let's move on to, to the druid skills. So druid skills um, kind of have this. The first build that I'm going to recommend is the bird build or Lily transform build because there's two birds. There's an owl as well. This is for DPS. We never use this. Um, so Lily transform turns you into this bird and you get increased healing for the as long as you stay a bird and you last as a bird forever. Uh, and then you, with the transformation, you also heal the lowest teammate. Uh, 
the positive thing about this is usually you're going to heal the tank. You want this first, and then the heals that come after are just going to be so much stronger, that 15% stronger, that uh, it's usually worth it, right? But that's the good part. The problem with it is you keep casting it, and a 32% heal is not that great on the second rotation, right? Uh, you definitely want something like... Um, like, look at Song of Life, much stronger. Almost, or it is over double the heal, right? But you're trading off early, um, you're trading off, like, the big heal every once in a while for more consistent 15% extra healing on all your skills. Uh, so with Lily Transform, uh, you're going to want to take, depending on the fight, so single target, you're going to want to take things like the one I just pointed out, Song of Life, I use this one a lot. My next favorite in the build is going to be, uh, where is it, uh, Song of Protection. The reason I like this, especially for Gladiator, is because you kind of hovered at low health for a long time. And like I said, the at least for other ones, the scaling is really good. Like, if you get a low health... Uh, like he like if your gladiator's at low health and you get a get this heal off, you'll notice it's probably like it feels like even fifty percent higher than if he were at like medium health. So this scales really well, I think, with the lower HP. Um another thing is the tree ward. Uh most almost every druid I've seen runs tree ward. Uh downs I'll start with the downsides. Downside is it does four it costs four. Uh, energy so that it takes a while to get this thing off a lot of times what i'll notice is someone will go lily transform and then they'll go tree ward right after that and lily transform is a small heal and tree ward takes four energy so you really haven't healed your tank that much for the first like 10 maybe first like 12 seconds of the of the battle you haven't even healed that much uh so but people still run it i, I do think it's really good especially with the shield um, and it's a 90% heal almost. That's really good. Um, I would recommend it. I, I'm not sure if it would be my first legendary, but it's definitely up there. Uh, let's, so th those are my single targets. Uh, there's very few times, um, I use this skill here, this binding heal, but it actually, it scales really well. Si look, look at this. 63%, um, is almost equivalent to... But it's for two people. The problem is it's yourself. It's not the two lowest. If you if you like look at um, Seed of Replenishment, I will al almost always take this over Binding Heal. Because um, this is always going to focus the two lowest. This will usually focus like uh, your tank and then yourself. And you may not need it, you know? So uh, I do like Seed of Replenishment. I use that a lot. And um, recently I've used Mend. Uh, but it's, it's, mm, it's, it's just not a big heal. A lot of, recently I've started to notice I need big heals right away. I got to get back up to full health or like half health. Uh, and men just doesn't do that. So I'm not going to recommend that as legendary. Uh, so I'm kind of go through and making a little tier list of all the skills. These things like quills and, uh, flower seed. I know he has legendary, and it's probably because early on they were very strong, having your druid being able to do some DPS. Uh, at the point where I'm on in the map, and you'll get there in like a week or two, you'll notice that you just need more heals. And these two, uh, see how he doesn't even have them equipped? He won't use. So I've gone over a single target. Uh, let's talk about uh, multi-target, or like AoE heals. Uh, and that's going to be uh, Force of Bud. This is very similar to the Ancestral Mark, if you watch my Shaman video. Uh, except we call them Seed of Life here. So Force of Bud is going to give everyone a Seed of Life. Um, sorry, let me look for the other one. I actually want to... Oops, sorry. Where is it? Here it is. No. Nice, this is the one. Seed of Life. So this is the order I would put it in right here. So Seed of Life starts, it's a small heal. It's actually a terrible heal. Um, but because the fact that it adds a Seed of Life, it's going to scale really well with the rest of the, like, the rest of the 
um, build. I would only really run this build on heavy AoE because it's a really slow startup. Your tank has to... You're, if you're going to run this, your tank cannot run Call to Arms or Let's Charge. He has to be going full defensive. So we're talking like uh, Blood Boil, Blood Howl uh, for your Gladiator, or like Last Stand, uh, Stockpile for your uh, Warrior. So they're going to have to have a lot of upfront shields or heals, or self-heals, for you to run this build. Just reminder remember uh i'm getting off topic a little bit but this is a team game like some builds i can't say this is the best build use these four skills always that just doesn't exist and even if it is the best build for some other person they may have their tank running something different or their dps running something different and if that's the case like maybe their tank has a legendary last stand so they're able to run this kind of build but your tank only has a rare last stand but he has say like a legendary um hoo hoo then in that case, you'd be wanting single target even in an AoE fight, right? So you really have to watch your team's abilities. That was off topic, but I just want to mention that before I get into like this build. Um, so Seed of Life puts a seed on everybody. Then um, Force of Bud um, increases healing by 10% if they already have a seed, which they will. And then it gives them another. So now they have two Seed of Lifes. And then Tranquility instantly heals for another 25% of the HP restored for each layer of Seed of Life. So Tranquility is going to be your huge heal. Here's the problem with this build. And it sounds so fun to use this combo, and, and it is. But the problem with this is Tranquility is a channel. And that really bothers me. I don't like channel abilities. Uh, the reason for that is while you're channeling, you're not gaining energy. So you have to wait for the channel to finish, and then you're going to be able to start auto attacking again to build energy to go through it again right so i don't like that about this but there are very few fights i would use this almost always i'm using uh, single target heals and when i'm not using single target heals i'm using seed of replenishment or uh tree ward or um life bloom life bloom i have to mention because it's the closest thing to uh font of purge which is what the shaman has this is not as good as the shaman's heal just straight up it's not as good but you still need it and that's for the debuff <laughs> so my final words on the skills and the builds your first legendary is more than likely going to be the bird oh turning into turning into lily here that's because most people who play druid want to be the bird so having it legendary is going to be good and um it does increase overall healing so it scales well um so yeah i'd recommend getting the bird doing what everyone else is doing it's kind of fun too uh clatter build i'm not going to spend a long time on clatter build because i'm just going to put a link in the description of my favorite clatter build for the druid um i will mention that the clatter build that i recommended in the description is not what I would use early game. My early game clatter build is different. So I, when I have five slots here, I'm looking to build plane, which is very easy. I'm looking to build two volcano. And then lastly, I'm I'm just going to... It's very quick, very easy. I'm just going to go ahead and grab sharp claw. I'm just going to put three sharp claws in there. It's nice that the, the Tiger King comes with the Snow Mountain, which you need anyway. So I'll probably get this guy. I'll get this guy. i get this guy. Because he might be rare. But definitely these two. You're going to get these two and whichever other one you want. And then I'm going to get... Snow Mountain. I'm going to get my last Snow Mountain. Probably this one right here. But it really doesn't matter because you're not going to be able to finish these. So now you have Snow Mountain. You've got three Sharp Claws. And all you need left is, where is he? There's one more plane. And I'm, I'm almost always going to go this guy here. So that's five uh, slots you fill up. Um, and it when, once you open up the sixth slot, I'm usually going to switch over to um, maybe picking up one, this guy here. And eventually late game, you're going to build into solid bone. It's just kind of hard to get there, you know? You want to attack, right? Attack is really good. Uh, so early on, that's that's how I build my clatter. But for my late game, which is the one you kind of want to know more anyway, 
Uh, it's going to be in the description. Check that out. Uh, I think that's it. This went way longer than I thought, so sorry about that. Um, but expect my uh, Assassin build to come out next. And that one will be really interesting because I've played it a ton. And I think it has a lot of variety. Uh, thanks for watching, guys.